logo of the U.S. Department of Transportation, Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. The material in this video is for training purposes only. FEMSA does not endorse any company or practice. Nothing in this video is meant to imply that FEMSA considers any depicted practice to be unsafe or in compliance. All copyrights, trademarks, and registered trademarks are the property of their owners. Opening scenes, a driver collapses from exposure to chemicals. Firefighters and police refer to the ERG book for guidance. The 2020 Emergency Response Guidebook. Video number two. Scene change, the ERG book is rotating to show the white pages section. All the information you need on how and when to use the ERG can be found in the opening white pages, including how to use this guidebook instructions in a flowchart format. Scene change, images of fire trucks responding with text on screen. The ERG is designed as a guide to aid first responders in quickly identifying the specific or generic hazards of the materials involved in the incident. As well as protecting themselves and the general public, it should only be used for the initial response phase, the period following arrival during which the presence and or identification of dangerous goods is suspected. Scene change, firefighters and police refer to the ERG while assessing an incident. Protective actions and the establishment of a perimeter are initiated, and the assistance of qualified personnel is requested. The responder should have already identified the material by its ID number and name. Scene change, ERG book, blue pages close up. If you cannot find the ID number, use the name of material index in the blue pages to find that number. Confirmed that the material is highlighted in green in the yellow or blue bordered pages. If not, Table 1 does not apply. Find the three-digit guide for the material. In order to consult emergency actions it recommends along with this table and noted wind direction. Scene change. First responders identifying hazards, responding, looking at maps, communicating and directing traffic. Once you have identified the potential hazards and established the initial guidance from the ERG, you may initiate protective actions. Based on the ERG, you may need to perform defensive actions before qualified personnel arrive, such as stopping traffic, establishing a perimeter and command post, and calling for additional resources. Scene change. A chemical container is open and on the ground with fumes escaping. In the crucial moments when the identification of the material is completely unknown, you could be the only responder on the scene for an extended period of time. Scene change. A simulated incident depicts visual clues to consider. You will need to use any and all available visual identification clues to safely approach the scene. Vehicle, container, placards, smoke color, victims on ground. Again, risk assessment must begin at a distance. In the very best case scenario, Upon arriving on an incident, you will have the shipping paper available to you with the necessary pieces of information you need to react immediately and decisively. Most often, there will be only parts of the information available, depending upon the nature of the incident. The appearance of colored smoke, a vapor cloud, or people who collapsed with no apparent cause may be your very first clue to the presence of hazmat. The shape of the container may be another clue from a distance to indicate a vehicle is carrying hazmat. As a last resort, you could use the road and rail car information chart in the white pages. As you get closer, you may be able to see only the color of a placard or other markings on the vehicle. So in cases where you cannot advance any further, you can still locate an orange section for response guidance, even if you only have the vehicle shape or the color of the placard. Scene change. A 911 operator with a headset is communicating in an emergency operations center. The size up starts with dispatch. From the initial report of an incident, every observation on scene will add critical data points to an unknown situation. Each will help you make necessary decisions. In these decisions, you will be guided to the orange section, which leads you to safety and protective actions instructions. The more thoroughly you understand how to use the Emergency Response Guidebook, the more you can significantly influence the successful outcome of an event. 
Your ability to assess the situation, identify the hazards, secure the scene, and begin using the ERG to inform your corrective action decisions after placing a call for assistance is imperative. Scene change, page one of the ERG book, depicting the decision tree flow chart. On page one of the ERG book version, you will find a decision tree that will guide you through making critical assessments. Get to know this process well ahead of an incident and practice finding example hazards with others. On the scene in the midst of a crisis is not the right time. Scene change, a mobile phone's home screen is seen. It is important to note that using the ERG digital app in place of the book will take significantly less time. Always use the digital app where possible, as regular updates to the app will include new information and protocols that may not be found in the book version. Scene change, the decision tree with example workflows. This is how to use the decision tree to assess a hazmat situation. First, start with the question block located in the top left corner. Do you see an explosive placard or label? Follow your yes or no answer to the adjacent block and the next question. In some cases, the chart will have you answer a previous question again after obtaining additional information. Once enough information has been found, the decision tree will guide you to the correct section within the ERG book to begin further assessments. If you see a placard with text or numbers in the middle section, there will be a hazard class number at the bottom. Reference the placards page and then go to the corresponding orange guide for instructions. For a complete listing of hazard classes, refer to page 6 in the white pages. You may also occasionally see a double orange panel. The top is used on some intermodal bulk containers and is referred to as the hazard identification code. And below that is your four-digit identification number. Scene change. Firefighters standing back with binoculars, doing a risk assessment. In a rescue situation, you must always assess and measure a risk assessment before acting. If possible, use binoculars to survey the hazard. The ERG will be your tool to assess those risks before rushing into a scene. The ERG is a guidance resource to approach and secure the incident safely, identify the level of hazard, and obtain help by calling in the incident according to your agency's protocols. In the absence of any information, placards, shipping papers, or container markings, you can always go to guide page 111, Mixed Load, Unidentified Cargo, the very first guide in the orange pages. And only as a last resort, use the road and rail car information. When provided with the shipping documents from a transporter, find the product name and proceed to the blue pages in order to get to the orange guide. Remember, any knowledge the transporter may have could prove to be extremely helpful and save time. Throughout the blue and yellow pages, you'll notice many highlighted entries. These highlighted materials indicate that the material is a toxic inhalation hazard, or TIH. It's important to note that in the U.S., poison inhalation hazards, or PIH, are also sometimes known as TIH. Once you realize you're dealing with a TIH material, the green bordered pages will provide you with an annex to Table 1, Initial Isolation and Protective Action Distances, Water Reactive Materials, which produce toxic gases. Table 2 lists materials that produce TIH gases when spilled in water. The ramifications of quantity will greatly affect the isolation and evacuation distance guidance. Be aware that vapors may be channeled in valleys or buildings. Table 3. Initial isolation and protective action distances for large spills for different quantities of six common TIH, PIH in the U.S., gases. Scene change, a simulated incident depicting variable clues to consider. When identifying the appropriate isolation zone for the nature of the TIH material you've encountered, pay close attention to notations regarding variables that influence the situation, whether it is day or night, the differences between a large and a small spill, wind direction, and estimating wind speed from environmental clues. Note also that all distances are given in meters, feet, kilometers, and miles. You should also be aware that in every orange guide, under the public safety heading, you'll find isolation and evacuation distances that correspond to that specific material. 
Know that the presence of fire in an incident involving a TIH-PIH material will possibly make toxicity factors a lower priority than fire or explosion potential. Scene change, images of liquid and gas pipelines. The white pages include revised information about gas pipelines and liquid pipelines, how to identify and or respond to incidents involving them. Pipelines are mostly buried, but there are above ground structures and signs indicating the presence of underground pipelines. Liquid pipelines carry crude oil, diesel fuel, jet fuel, and other highly volatile liquids. Gas pipelines carry natural gas. Pipeline releases can range from relatively minor leaks to catastrophic ruptures. It is important to remember that gases and liquids behave differently once they're released from a pipeline. Generally, the following could be indications of a pipeline leak or rupture. Hissing, roaring, or explosive sound. Flames appearing from the ground or water, perhaps very large flames. Vapor cloud, fog or mist. Dirt, debris or water blowing out of the ground. Liquids bubbling up from the ground or bubbling in water. Distinctive, unusually strong odor of rotten eggs, skunk or petroleum. Discolored or dead vegetation. Discolored snow above a pipeline right-of-way. Or oil slick or sheen on flowing or standing water. These pages are your guide to responding correctly and safely. This completes video two of a three-part series. Please review your emergency response guide, either hard copy or app, as we transition to video three, the notification process.